This is the Oklahoma Sports Podcast presented by OklahomaSports.net. Stay tuned for interviews and information about high school, college, and professional sports around the state of Oklahoma. Now here's your host, Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for stopping by the podcast. Today our guest is Chris Francis, the head coach of the USAO Drovers men's basketball team, whose Drovers made a little run in the NAI tournament last week. Coach, thanks for taking some time with us today, and congratulations on another successful season. I appreciate it, and thanks for having me. Coach, 22-11 and 11 for the year. Let's talk about your season as a whole then and, and get into the tournament in just a moment. Again, in your fourth season, the win totals continue to rise from 17, 19, 21, 22 then this season. Yeah. 79 wins in four years. That's just shy of 20 wins per season. I'll tell you what, let's round it up. 20 wins per season then, and uh, that's that's pretty successful in your four-year run. Yeah, when when uh, you know when I took over the job, we knew how how hard it was going to be to to win and compete in this conference, and uh, we had to do a lot of recruiting and you know um, getting a lot of student uh, support around here. And I think that's a big reason of our, our success lately is uh, getting some local guys with a lot of local support, um, and, and with our home games being um, as big of this crowd as it's been lately. I think that has a lot to do with it as well. Um, credit my assistant coaches as well. Um, they did a good job on um, the past few years of recruiting um, and you know, uh, doing a good job at scheduling and whatnot. And I think it's just a, it's just if we can get kids on our campus, um, our campus is beautiful, um, and, and we compete in one of the toughest and best conferences in the nation. So we use that a lot to to sell to some transfers, uh, JUCO kids, and, and really some high school kids. Um, here lately, we've been doing a, a great job at, at getting some outstanding high school kids who's been all staters or we'll say seven kids, um, and that's helped out tremendously because uh, they they're coming from great programs and they want to be coached and they play really hard for you. And so, um, you know, when we took over the, the the program, that was kind of the mold is to, to kind of get some Oklahoma kids in here and that can can really compete and just you know play the tails off for us. And I think that has a lot to do with that because once that happens, like I said, you know, some friends, family come come fill the stands and. You know, we play a little bit harder at home, and I think our home <laughs> record's been really good here lately, um, and that kind of you know carries over itself. So, and a good selling point. You're right. Beautiful campus there in Chickasha, and also, I mean, one of the premier conferences, if not the premier conference in basketball, and and uh, on the whole, the Sooner Athletic Conference just continues to shine. And and you all represented very well this year. Yeah, no, the the sack is. Uh, if you ask me or anybody in our league, um, and a few people out of our league, it's, it's the best uh, best conference in the NAI period. Um, we got the most championships won uh, at Kansas City, and I believe the most games won um, in Kansas City. And, you know, with teams like Oklahoma City University in America, um, you know, John Brown University, Langston, even uh, Langston University is in our league this year, um, it, which made it really, really tough. Um, our conference really prepares us uh, going into the national tournament because uh, it's a day in and day out. You know, there's no given given wins in our league, and so uh, it's it's the best conference in the nation, if you ask me. You know, it's full of transfers, uh, full of guys that's been at the next level um, and, and, and come to our level for whatever it may be. Um, and even guys that you know, junior all Americans are, are in our conference, and so um, we got a lot of great coaches in our league. They do a really good job recruiting um, and it just makes for a tough tough year in our league so speaking now with coach Chris Francis from USAO again the Drovers make a run to the elite eight of the NAI men's basketball tournament in Kansas City Uh, coach we run through this really quickly you all defeated the Masters from California 78 75 clutch hutch with the three-pointer at the buzzer and yeah. <laughs> that was a that was yeah. a nice shot to turn right back around after a made basket to tie it and then get it down and then you move on defeat Wiley 76-63 there in that second round game and on to William Carey 102 to 98 in overtime wow that was a that was a tough loss but but again quite a run talk about your run yeah, no. When you know when you can make it to Kansas City anytime, it's it's a special time. And you know we had a lot of new guys this season, and a few a few returners, um, a key returners for us that's been in Kansas City. Uh, but we we preached all year that the goal was to get you know get to Kansas City and get a better season than what we have been doing in the past you know two years. Um, and it's hard. 
hard to it's hard to paint that picture for guys who hasn't really been up there and who hasn't you know we're telling them what a great experience it is but it's just kind of as a player i remember it's kind of hard you know the picture you know the excitement and the feeling and everything uh, when you get up there and so we did a good job at kind of staying focused on our main goal and like i said earlier it's the goal was to get a better seat because the past two years we've, we've had to play the number one team in the nation i felt like <laughs> uh, if not the number one i'm the number two and so uh when we and we competed and uh the first year you know we we're excited just to be up there uh the second year kind of the same thing and you know this year was a kind of we took we took the trip um kind of a more of a, of a business trip and you know we told our guys like look you know we've been up here before this isn't our first rodeo um it's time to win a game uh because you know i even told my ad last year i said look coach i'm t- i apologize i'm sorry for spending the school's money for just coming up here for one day i told them look we're not going to lose in the first round anymore <laughs> and so luckily uh, you know i went and got so we went and got some good players that helped us over that hump and um we get up there um and then as soon as you get up there it doesn't matter really what seed you know i say we want to have a good seed obviously a, a higher seed would help us but honestly you get up there and it doesn't really matter it's just it's all about who comes to play and, and how lucky you can get and you know how hot you can get and how quick you can do that and so we get up there um looking at the masters we knew we had a, a good matchup um and matchups is is key too when you get to kansas city because you know it's the toughest tournament in college basketball you got to win uh what, five games and six nights or, or or something like that and so you get up there and it's all about matchups and we thought we had a great matchup in the masters um they had height um but they like to score the ball a lot you know we had height um and you know so we thought that we could match up with them well our assistants did a great job on the scouting report. Our guys did a great job at following through, following through with it. And, uh, you know, we, we, we had to lead throughout the most of the game. And, you know, something comes down to the end. And um, we, we we was in that situation a lot this year where we needed one stop to, to either win the game or to tie the game or whatever it may be. And um, a lot of those times, it was, it was 50-50 we came up with it. And, you know, going out in the timeout, um, you know, I told the guys, like, look, this is how we lost our last home game against mid Americans by not getting this stop. And, you know, I really challenged them. And I, th- I thought they did a great job at, at, at forcing the, the point guard into a tough situation, a tough shot. And he just hit an cr- incredible shot. <laughs> and so, uh, luckily, Hutch Peterson, who's been known to, to win a few games for us by doing some crazy stuff like he did um, and hitting some crazy shots, luckily he got his hand on the ball. And, you know, three almost four seconds, that's a lot of time to get up the court. And, you know, I, I don't know if he was hearing me or not, but, you know, I was trying to preach to him that he had enough time to get to where he needed to go, and so he zigzagged his way all the way to the court and let it go, uh, let a floater go a foot past the free throw line or three point line, and uh, it, the sucker rolled in. And so, uh, <laughs> one of the best feelings I've ever had. Well, um, so you, you all, it, yeah, you it, all move on. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so after that crazy turnaround, um, as, as you know, we we played late. The past, the first two games, we had a nine fifteen start, and so um, so luckily we had enough rest to to, to prepare for Wiley. Uh, so we go to into Wiley. Uh, they come out of the Red River Conference. You know how tough that conference is. I, I actually that's where my first job was. It was in the Red River, so I was kind of familiar with the school and the program and the coach. And so um, we thought we could. We thought we was kind of a you know bigger inside. Um, and we thought we could dominate a little bit more inside, but the big question was if our guards could really, you know, step up and handle the handle the task at hand. And um, our guards stepped up tremendously. You know, Stephon Hall, a freshman, did a great job. Cameron Hines came along. Uh, Manny Gatkin, another freshman, um, and then Gino and Dedrian kind of held down the tournament for us all the whole tournament. So, um, but really everybody played well. Um, that's when we finally started to get comfortable. I believe it was in the Wiley game. Um, but before we played at Wiley, we had to sit and wait through two overtimes in the game before us. And so <laughs> I don't think our game started until 11 o'clock. And you know, when I look at my watch at the end of the game, it's about it's about 2 o'clock or one thirty. And, you know, and, and, and looking at the schedule, you know, when we first went up there, we knew we had to play the, the, the first game the next day after that um, if we hadn't made it that far. Uh, but honestly, I really wasn't worried about that time. I was just worried about the Masters at that time. So, but after 
after, you know, getting back to the hotel, I don't think those coaches really slept in an hour. Um, and hopefully the players got a, a couple more hours of rest than we did. But, you know, by the time everybody got laid down, it was it was 3, 3, 3.30 a.m. Um, and we had to be up at 9 a.m. to uh, to eat pregame. And so pregame and film, we tried to go over and scout as quick as we could. Um, so it took a lot of a lot of heart um, and a lot of digging down deep to, to even, you know, get through a warm-up, if you ask me. Them guys came out and, you know, they probably played the best half that they've ever played all year. Um, and then getting towards the end, you know, we kind of had to lead throughout the whole game. And, you know, kind of William Carey played, you know, 11 to 12 guys. And they knew that, you know, pressing us full court would eventually get our legs. And, you know, I think that's all that kind of what happened to us at the end is, we just hit a wall. I mean, I, I asked the guys to leave it out and empty the tank, and, you know, I can guarantee you nobody had any more ounce of energy <laughs> left to give us uh, when that final buzzer went off, and I couldn't be even more proud of these guys and just for the fight and the will just to even, you know, get through that first half with the, you know, a shooting percentage like they had pretty much the whole game. You know, I think we shot, I mean, we scored 98 points and, you know, shot a, a high clip, and so um, just really proud of their, their will and their fight. Um, we got a lot of guys back from this year's team, um, and they were really hungry after that after that loss. And seeing the emotion about Gino Artisan, uh, Clay Long, and Hutch Peterson, it just puts everything in perspective on on how important it is, or how how big going to Kansas City is, um, especially as a senior. And so I'm very proud of those guys. Yeah, coach, it, it really was a lot to ask when when your game schedule schedule tip time at at nine fifteen. Of course, you, you know obviously it started much later in the night than that, and and you all yeah. really played two games in a fourteen hour stretch in a national tournament, uh, just a scheduling quirk like that. And it was uh, I know I, I looked at it and thought, wow, you know if you guys play thirty nine minutes, you win. 40 minutes yeah. almost, and then 45 was just – it was just too much. And, and Coach, you're right. I mean, you look at the, the box score. You guys had five players in double figures, and William Carey with 11 players that scored at least one basket and had at least one rebound. So, you know, they, they just had a, a little bit more legs there. Well, Coach, yeah. to, to wrap up our time today, and I want to get to visit with you again sometime, but uh, to wrap it up today, I, I'd like to ask this question – to you all, and specifically as you were talking about Oklahoma players, uh, you know, a run like this really does make a difference, doesn't it, for recruiting and, and getting some of the, the great in-state talent that Oklahoma has. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And, you know, I'll tell you this, every every kid I recruited, and you can ask Stephon Hall, you can ask Adrian Palmer, you know, Hutch Peterson, um, you know, Cameron Hines, Graydon Steinman, those are all the Oklahoma kids we got, and we got a lot of them. More than probably any any I Division One school in Oklahoma, I can probably guarantee you that. Um, but it's 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 when I go and recruit them, the thing I tell them, and, and what I can really sell to them, and, and really believe is tell is telling them that hey, they got a shot at being a national champion, and they got a shot at being an All American. Um, and, and when I tell them that, I, I really believe it because. Um, I, I mean, we've done it before in 2002 in Briscoe's era, and he had the same type of kids. He had a few Oklahoma kids on that team, um, and so when I go recruit these guys and and really tell it, tell them, you know, and then you know, especially with, with us making this run, um, they should be able to to really um, make them think like, yeah, I want to go to USAO, and yeah, I want to have a shot at, at at winning and being on championship teams because um, I think we can do that here. Uh, because we've done it in the past, and, and really that's what you know. I, I, I really sell whenever I'm going up against a lot of these Division Twos because, I mean, honestly, to win a Division Two national championship is really, really, really tough, and so is winning the NAI championship. Um, but I think they have a better shot at, at coming here and winning multiple championships and, and not just maybe being, being that Cinderella team or maybe being, you know, having the shot of going to just a region tournament or whatever it may be. And so, um, so that's really what we sell to them. We recruit them, uh, kind of show them our record in the past, you know, say, Hey, every year we've been doing that. We've been getting better and better. And, and I think I really feel deep down inside that we hopefully will have a shot at winning the national championships, um, within the next few years. And, and really that's the goal. And so, um, hopefully we can do that. All right, Coach Chris Francis, the head coach for USAO, whose team just continues to increase in the win total, 
22 and 11 this season, and uh, a good, a solid, a deep run in the NAI tournament. Coach, success to you. I, I agree. Looks like a team that will be back again next year. We'll be talking about this in 2019, 2020, but have a good off season. Enjoy it. Uh, rest a little bit if you can. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. We'll and, get some rest and get back after it. All right. Well, thank you for taking some time with us today on the Oklahoma Sports Podcast. No problem. Anytime. Thanks for having me. 